All right, I'm Richard Hines, and today's video is going to be on the bark and hold for protection dogs. Now, what is a bark and hold? Simply, it is you send a protection dog away from you to go find somebody. When they get to the person, they actually find them, they bark at them. but not supposed to bite them necessarily. <laughs> so when they find, they alert, they trap the person, alert, they found them, they have them caught here, and waiting for you to come, the game goes. If the person tries to flee or attack the dog, the dog is allowed to take action. Okay, so as long as the person stays still, doesn't move, the dog holds itself and just barks. Right, keeping the alert and keeping the threat on the person that it was sent to find. Now, we have different versions. So the reason that I'm doing this video, I had many people, subscribers, friends of mine, wanted me to explain the difference between the bark and holds for the sports and real world protection. They are very different, okay? So, and this has been something, a pet peeve of mine that has bothered me for a long time. Not <laughs> seeing that so many protection dog companies, right? I mean, almost all of them that sell personal protection dogs treat the bark and hold as if they're doing a sport, right? So all the top companies that sell personal protection dogs, except for mine, <laughs> all sell trained dogs with a sport bark and hold. So it always puzzles me and <laughs> I don't get it. I don't understand how and why they're doing that. It's obvious that they don't understand the difference. And most companies bring their dogs from Europe with sport training on them, which all the sports have a bark and hold in it, but it's an unrealistic bark and hold. So that's what this video is going to be about, okay? Giving the difference between the sport version bark and hold and a real protection dog bark and hold or police dog bark and hold, right? So a real protection dog, personal protection dog for a home family and a police dog are the same, okay? The sport ones are different. <laughs> so I'm gonna explain right now what the difference is so people understand if you're buying one 
what to look for. If you're training one as a trainer, what to be aware of, what's real, what's not real. All right, so here, let's go through the difference. In sports, okay, all protection sports, they all have a bark and hold in them. Different versions, but they all have a bark and hold. So, let's take the most famous one that worldwide everyone does. When they teach personal protection dogs, they actually teach this one to their dogs they're selling to people. So, in a shuts and IPO, bark and hold, they send the dog to go search the teepees, and the final one, the decoy is going to be inside the teepee with the sleeve here, right? Has the stick in this hand down here, and he's going to stay still inside the teepee, hidden. The dog is going to come around when he finds him. He comes in very close and starts barking up and down, bouncing. Right? And like I explained in other videos, the, the dogs in the sport, especially Schutzen, are barking at the toy, not the man, even though it looks that way, but very close, and you get the talking, the alerting, that he found the guy. The owner will be coming down the field, right? So in competition in shots and IPO, the dog will not get a bite at that moment. On training field for the competition, he'll get bites to keep his interest and know that the guy inside there is a possible bite victim, <laughs> which keeps the dog's drive high and possibility that he'll get a bite this time. Okay, so, but, the dog is very close when he's alerting, okay? In French ring sport, or any of the ring sports, I'm going to use this one here as French ring. Same kind of thing inside this enclosure, right, like a teepee. The dog comes in, finds the guy, starts talking, very close on the body, Right, almost has his head on his waist. And is alerting that he found him and <laughs> then begins out of frustration to push the guy in the leg with his paw. He's like <laughs> hitting his leg, come on, move. Because in French ring, the dog knows with absolute certainty he is going to get a bite when he finds that guy. Right? In French ring, they're going to give the bite. So they let the dog stay a little frustrated. They want to test his patience when he finds not to take a bite. Right? Because the more frustrated the dog gets, they're more willing to, and more vulnerable to take a risk and take a bite at the decoy out of the frustration that's been building. So here, he's sitting there for a little bit. When the dog found him, he's talking to him, talking to him, talking to him, and the dog's getting frustrated, so the dog starts to push him in the leg with the paw.
Oh, come on, move. Move already. Let me bite you. Right? <laughs> so, knowing it's coming. So, they're testing the dog's patience to hold off. Make sure he doesn't take a cheap shot when he's not supposed to. Until the decoy moves. When the decoy moves, he's allowed to take the bite. So he's pushing him, begging him to move. Okay? And then you see he finally moves and the dog gets to get the bite. Now, these two versions, different sports, but different way going about this, but both very close onto the decoy and the body. Putting dogs in a very dangerous, vulnerable position, okay? This is what we call a no-no in protection dog training, okay? So if that stick, the guy in the blind, in the shots in IPO, it was a knife, and the dog was rah, 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 he could have just went bam and stabbed him, chest, neck, whatever it was, being that close, right? Being right here. Dog has no shot when he's that close and his head's up like that, and the guy had his hand here and the sleeve is here as like you're snake charming, right? So the dog knows the arm, he's looking for this. Here, he would have been thrown off, that, done, okay? But if there was distance, there's no way that that guy, even if he had here and the dog was barking from out there, would never be able to do this without the dog going wham, bam, or hitting him here and stopping the attack. Okay? There's a big difference. It's huge. And it puts the dog so vulnerable in real life that it's unacceptable, <laughs> right? So that's why when I buy sport dogs, right, to sell, I have to change all the training on the dog, right? Because I have to get rid of all these unnatural, superficial, what I call it, sport behavior and turn these things into real protection, real life protection skills. So now I have to alter the dog away from what they learned for years, right? So in real life, I'm going to show you here KNPV, which is a Dutch sport but it's a police dog exam for real police dogs, right? So the KMPV is producing almost all the police military dogs for all countries, right, coming out of Holland, right? The KMPV is only in Holland. So you have to purchase dogs from there. It's not played anywhere else in the world, that sport, only in Holland. So when those dogs pass their exams of the KMPV exam police test in Holland, they are now certified that they are good enough and that they qualified to be a certified police dog. So now those dogs are sold to people all over the world, police, military, United States, Europe, uh, I mean, all over the world, right, are all now coming from KMPV. Strictly, I would say 95% of all police dogs around the world and military dogs are coming out of the KMPV in Holland. Okay, so it's a huge thing. So the Dutch don't care about fancy 
anything like that. They care about real tough dogs taking care of business in real life that have the guts, tenacity, toughness, and they're going to put a beat down on you, right? If they got to catch you, they're sent on you, it is going to be horrendous, right? But the training also, right here for the KMPV, you're going to see here in their testing, they send the dog around the back of the decoys. And bark from behind. Right? Even though they're very close. But they don't want them in front because they're at risk of being hit, shot, stabbed. Okay? So they send them to the back and the dogs learn to run, get around the back and bark here. Because any movement, any movement, anything of a kickback, right, or they, you're going to get mauled. Right? I mean, they're going to grab the arm, they're going to grab you in the leg, they're going to grab you in the butt. It's going to be horrendous. So you're putting the dog in the driver's seat, right, with this position of making them safe. And they have the advantage now. They are not at risk. Right? So even if a weapon was down here and you went like this, by the time that hand even moves a little bit, they got you in the leg, they got that arm that just moved. I mean, it's very difficult, right, to harm a dog, really difficult with whatever you have when they're on your back. I mean, the slightest movement, they're all over that. That's their opportunity. But same game. When they come in and come around that back, they're doing a bark and hold. They're not supposed to bite. They got to stay there and talk unless there's movement. Okay? Until the guy moves. He tries to flee, tries to go and hit the dog. They just have to sit there and talk unless there's any of those movements. Then they're allowed to bite. But in that sport, because it's behind, they're taking all the risk out of the game, which is real police work. Now, in America, we hate that, right? So the dogs that we import for police, now you got to recondition a dog because here we want them to be in the front because people run, they go into buildings, they hide in corners, they try to put themselves somewhere and hide with their backs and the dogs cannot get behind generally. So we need them out here in the front to talk and close them off and keep them captured and stuck, right? So they can't, right? So that's the only issue with having a dog come behind and do the barking from here. It's just not in our country, you know, the, <laughs> the ideal way to do it <laughs> because most people are going to be caught in a corner or somewhere else and the dog's not going to be able to get back there. All right, so here with Rocco, one of the dogs I trained, he's on my YouTube channel. Anybody who follows me knows Rocco well. <laughs> it's one of the highlighted dogs on my YouTube channel in protection work. So here, when I was teaching Rocco how to do the bark and hold, we were keeping him probably three to five feet from me to bark a little further out. And you see I get tucked in, he talks, 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 and then when I make my move to go attack him, he bites. Or, I try to run away and flee, he knows that's his moment, and he bites me in the back. 
<laughs> right? But we have that gap to keep him safe, right? And you see in that one there, the moment I go to throw an attack, that he was up in that arm so fast. I mean, even if I had a weapon here, a knife, and I went like this, boom, he's going to hit me. I went like this, he's going to come down, he's going to hit me here, he's going to hit me somewhere up here. You might even get it in the face, right? So, I mean, even to come down like this would be very dangerous with, you know, these real protection dogs. Because they're not playing, right? So, Rocco had gotten other decoys of mine <laughs> up in the chin and the face, right? So I know if I would have even a knife down here and I would have made a move like that when he's out there like that and I even went like this, he was already coming and if I have my head down to go like this, I'm probably going to get it in the neck face somewhere around there or he's going to stop the arm. However it goes with no equipment on, it is going to be brutal, right? And Rocco has a serious bite on him, right? Anybody who's followed this has seen me bruised in the suit. Take it off. I'm bruised all over. I have to do timeouts because the pain of the bites is unbearable in a big 40-pound suit jacket, right? I mean, his bite is nasty, right? You do not want to take a bite from this guy without equipment on. So any of this stuff club I mean it would just be a nightmare to take a bite so the attacks would be stopped easily okay so that's why we keep that footage and I taught Rocco to hold a gap out there and talk away from me right and then here Rocco finds me in a bathroom hiding and the moment he finds me, he was going to enter, but he jumps back out knowing the game that even though I'm in the bathroom, he cannot come in because it's a tight little bathroom. There's nowhere to go. So I was right behind the door. So the moment he realized when he, the door opened that he was too close, he jumped backwards outside the bathroom and gave me space. Right? Not jumping up on me and right in here. Rah, 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 right, right inside me, right? Being right here is dangerous business and this is poor training and just not understanding real protection when trainers teach dogs to be in that close in a bark and hold. Right? And I know it's the normal thing to do around the world and it's, you know, sports created this, right? And getting this close thing. But for a real protection dog, anybody who really knows protection well knows you never do that or teach that. Right? I mean, it's just a no-no. So, then here you see Alpha, boxer I was teaching. He's staying pretty good, right, outside. <laughs> and he's new at it, but he was keeping a good distance barking at me, right, until I ran at him. <laughs> so we prefer those distances and gaps when we do our bark and holes. It gives the dog big advantage, takes the risk off of them, right? And puts them in the perfect positions to be able to gauge the situation, 
not be surprised by an arm movement or an attack, right? We make sure the dogs are safe. And I mean, these dogs are so quick on any even little flinch movement that when they're out that three to five range, I mean, anything that moves that they are coming and they're gonna cut it off. Being here, it's too easy. Boom, right? Knife, here, I mean, anything. Shot, I mean, so that, this is the difference between sport bark and holds and real protection dog, police dog bark and holds. Okay? So, again, all my dogs, all the dogs I train, I always make sure we teach that distance and gap. It's unacceptable to have in here. So, that is the difference between sport bark and holds, personal protection, police bark and holds. Okay? So, that's that. I hope I cleared that up. So, till next time, Richard Hines, Miami Dog Whisperer.